Good morning. My name is Maynard Pittendray. I am the pastor of College Park Presbyterian Church. Welcome to our online worship service together. Listen to this word of the Lord found in Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us. And we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Let us worship the Lord. Your goodness is wrong. 
Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, you've raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and have failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ who rules the world and who is the head of the church, his body. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. My friends, hear the good news of the gospel. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess how false, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. This is the good news of the gospel. Therefore, let us give glory to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Here below. Here below, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise Father, Son, and Holy. I invite you to join us in prayer. Remember the chat room. Remember email and text are ways that you can share your prayer concerns with us. We want to pray with and for you. Give us an opportunity to do that. Let us know what your concerns are. Let's join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings to be upon the people of this church. Give us strength. We are socially distant. Keep us in touch with one another. Help us to serve one another. Bring us together in good fellowship, even when we are apart. Be with this pastor and with the elders of this congregation that we may continue to lead your people. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with our nation especially during the time of civil unrest and pandemic, financial uncertainty. Gracious Father, lead this country. Give us strength. Give us good leadership. Bless the President of the United States and all others in authority that they may seek and know your will rather than their own selfish desires. We pray not only for our nation, but for every nation, that the hungry may be fed, the homeless housed, the oppressed free. We ask that you would bless those individuals who are on our hearts because they are sick or afflicted or lost or anxious. Give them strength, sustain them and raise them up in the name of Christ. We ask that you would continue to bless our students. It is a difficult time to engage in classwork and we pray that you would keep them safe and attentive to their studies. Be with teachers and administrators that you may continue to give them endurance. These are our common concerns as a church. And now we lift up to you our private concerns quietly within our own hearts. And now together we continue to voice our prayers to you saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. to the Master, give of the strength of your youth, throw your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Testament lesson comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning with verse 10, continuing through verse 12. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. 
When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give to you, a land with fine, large cities which you did not build, and houses filled with all sorts of good things that you did not put there, hewn cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant, and when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And our New Testament lesson is from Acts chapter 20, beginning with verse 32. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted <clears throat> no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. And all of this I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. <clears throat> Story is told about a town that had a very stingy, miserly skin flint. He was just very selfish with his wealth. One day, one of the folks in town was given the task of chairing the community charity drive. And he decided that uh, he was going to go to the town skin flint first, because if he could get a contribution from him, the rest would be easy. So he went to the home of the skin flint and he knocked on the door and um, he said, look here, our records show that you've never once given to the community charity fund drive and we need your participation. We would like for you to be part of this community charity uh, drive and we appreciate anything that you might give. And the man looked at the fundraiser and he became angry, visibly angry. Do your records show that I have an elderly mother who was left penniless when my father died? Do your records show that I have a disabled brother who's unable to work? Do your records show that I have a widowed sister with two small children who can barely provide food for them? And the chairman of the fundraiser he was humiliated and embarrassed, and he, he said, I am so sorry. No, our records didn't show any of that. I had no idea. I am so sorry. And the man looked at the fundraiser. He was still flushed with anger and said, if I don't give to them, why should I give to you? <laughs> now, most of us would like to be remembered as a generous person rather than an old skin flint. But I suspect that many of us are not as generous as we could be, or maybe as we should be. There are certain marks of being a Christian. And we instinctively know these marks. People look at us from the outside of the church and they expect Christians to be loving and kind and generous. We should be generous. In Jimmy Stewart's movie, Shenandoah, I love the scene in which the family gathers from time to time for a meal. Uh, it's during the Civil War, and um, from time to time the family gathers together for a meal, and Jimmy Stewart leads a prayer of grace. And the prayer always goes something like this. <clears throat> oh Lord, we clear this land, we plowed it, we sowed it, we harvested it. We cooked the harvest, it wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be eating it if we hadn't done all the work ourselves. We are dog bone tired having worked for every crumb and morsel. But we did all the work ourselves, but we thank you anyway for whatever you might have had to do with it. Amen. We did this. We accomplished this. We earned it. No, we did not. The reality is that everything we have is a gift from God. And that's why we always need to give thanks for all the things we enjoy and to be generous with, with what we have. 
Our Old Testament lesson teaches that everything we have is a gift from God. Listen to those words again. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give to you a land with fine and large cities, which you did not build. Filled with wonderful houses, filled with all sorts of good things that you did not put there. With cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when you have eaten your fill, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of slavery into this place. All gifts we have come from God. All the things we have and all the things we enjoy are ultimately God's to begin with. So the motivation to be generous comes from the realization that what we have is not ours anyway. They all belong to God, everything we have, and we are to use them and to share what we have. In the Old Testament, there's a time in which the people are gathering offerings to be used in God's temple. And David, King David, uh, leads a prayer. And he says, who are we to give these things to God? All things belong to God. And all we are doing is giving to God the things that already belong to God. Our motivation to be a generous people comes in part, at least, from the realization that what we have comes from God as a gift to us to use and to share. Another motivation to be generous is that when we are generous, it enriches our lives. And that sounds selfish, and it is, <laughs> but it's true. The story is told of a farmer who grew award-winning corn, and every year he entered the corn in the uh, county fair, and it won first prize every year. One day a newspaper reporter interviewed him and learned the farmer's strategy for winning corn. And his strategy was simply this. The farmer purchased uh, some special seed corn many years ago, and since then, he shared his seed corn with his neighbors. And the reporter said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How, how does that work? How can you afford to share your best seed corn with your neighbors? They're going to enter the uh, competition at the county fair as well. Uh, how, how, how can you afford to just give it away? And the farmer explained, don't you know, don't you understand? The wind picks up the pollen from my ripening corn and swirls it from into the air from field to field. And if my neighbors grow inferior corn, the pollen from their corn is going to come and land in my field. And degrade my corn. If I'm going to grow good corn, I have to help my neighbors grow good corn. Now there's a lesson for us in this. If we're going to go out and grow good corn, we got to share and help our neighbors grow good corn. Another step further, if we want to grow a good life, we got to help our neighbors grow a good life. We want to grow good children, got to help grow good children in the neighborhood. Being generous enriches our lives. Stephen G. Post, founding director of the Center for Medical Humanities at Stony Brook University School of Medicine in New York City. What a title. And if you think his title is, is long-winded, so is the quotation I'm about to share, but it's a good quotation worth sharing. Many studies show that one of the best ways to deal with hardship of life is not just center on yourself, but take the opportunity to engage in simple acts of kindness. He explains that studies have shown that when people think they're helping others, they activate a part of their brain called the mesolimpic pathway, which is responsible for feelings of gratification, helping others doles out happiness chemicals, including dopamine, endorphins, and blocked pain signals, and, and so forth and so on. And I don't know what he's really talking about here, but I know that it's true. Helping others makes us feel better because 
Well, that's just a long-winded way of saying what Jesus said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. According to Dan Irely, professor of behavioral economics and psychology at Duke University, if you are the recipient of a good deed, you may have a momentary happiness, but your long-term happiness is higher if you are the giver. Let me say that again. If you are the recipient of a good deed, you have a short-term happiness. If you are the giver of good deeds, you have a longer-term happiness. And he gives an example in his study. If you give people a gift card for Starbucks and uh, so they can go out in the morning and buy some good coffee uh, and then call them at the end of the day in the evening and ask um, how they feel, they're no more or less happy than they were the day before. But if you give another group a gift card, but you tell them you give that gift card away this morning so someone else can have a good cup of coffee. Just give it to a random person or a friend. And then you call them at night at the end of their day. And those people are happier. It's, it's what Jesus said. It is more blessed to give than to receive. The National Kidney Foundation has said that there are three important ways that generosity helps improve one's health. It lowers blood pressure, um, it lowers levels of cholesterol, and it combats depression. And like any medicine, you can't take it once, you gotta take it daily, you gotta be generous daily. Or as Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now here's another thing about generosity, your giving and being generous encourages other people to be generous and giving. And the more people are generous, the healthier the community becomes. Generosity, whether it's giving to the church or giving to strangers or giving to friends is contagious. Your generosity encourages others to be generous. I read recently about a place named Heavenly Donut. I have no clue where Heavenly Donuts is, but I want to go there. Just the name sounds wonderful. Eileen Taylor, according to this article I read, went through the drive through line at Heavenly Donuts one day, wherever that may be, and unknown to her at the time that she pulled up to the window, the customer in front of her had paid for her purchase. And she said, the gesture just made such a difference in my life. And Eileen explained that she'd recently lost her job as a physician's assistant. Um, money was tight. Her family was under a lot of stress. And that day she was just gonna go to the donut shop and get good coffee and a heavenly donut. And uh, she was inspired by the man who paid for her bill, a stranger she had never met. So she decided that she was gonna pay it backwards and pay for the purchase of the, the people uh, right behind her. She asked the person at the window, how much, what's, what's the other guy buying and how much is his bill? Well, here it is, I'll give it to you. And she didn't know this, but her act of kindness and the kindness of the stranger in front of her had gone viral. It had created a chain reaction and dozens of cars in the drive through uh, were prompted to pay it backwards and pay for the person in, in back of them. And uh, uh, throughout the, uh, the morning uh, rush for a coffee and a heavenly donut, 55 drivers <laughs> paid for the order of the person behind them. Our gener generosity is contagious. And it can make a difference in the lives of others. It can make a difference in the life of this church and what we're able to do for the people in this community. It can make a difference in our own lives. And it is just as Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. 
And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory, today and forever. Amen. We bring our gifts to your altar, O Lord God of hosts. We lay them at the foot of your throne. We bring our gifts to your altar. We are always grateful for the generosity of our friends and members. Your giving enables us to continue to do the work of God in our church, in our community, and indeed in various places throughout the world. You can go to collegeparkprez.org and you will find at the top menu bar the word give. You can click on that link give and you can do online giving by those means or you can mail your uh, contribution to us using the U.S. postal system. Simply send your check to College Park Presbyterian Church 118 East Parr Street, Orlando, Florida 32804. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your God in heaven. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you were rich, and yet you became poor for our sake, so that through your poverty we might become spiritually rich. Accept this offering and this collection that we are receiving online and through the mail as a token of our gratitude for all that you have done. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. today mm -hmm. and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name.
with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Show. 